How's it going, everybody? We just launched our new Discord. Link is in the description down below. If you enjoy talking Pioneer and hanging out with other people who enjoy the format, please go check it out. Thanks. Up against Facade. I'd say it just needs a little bit of top end, but it's really nice. Any big spell kind of gets us going. It's not. It's one of those hands that like any of these cards could be big. Chaos theory. Yeah, big fan of this mono green deck. Friend of the stream, uh, BCS top forward the challenge with it. So, hey, thank you for the bid, Musu. Uh, so the combo is if you have, I think it's twelve devotion, one Nykthos, two Kioras, two Karns. You can draw your whole deck with Pestilence Cauldrons, Backside, Restorative Burst, and you're able to just keep looping it over and over again. And then eventually you just mill your opponent out for the number of cards that you gained life. We did it once last night. It's a little bit click intensive, but it's not too bad. Well, looks like we're up against Lotus Field. Having Besage is not too bad for us. Opening your own magic store? Yeah, magic stores are a lot of work. Hey, thank you so much. Hopefully we get a, get a chance to show you, because like I said, it's a fun one, and we got to do it yesterday. Uh, so you're basically, plan A is storming the festival and just getting ahead on mana, and then you can sort of backdoor into the combo if you're into a position where you're not able to win uh, a little bit more traditionally. Yeah, I think opening a magic store is one of those things that, like, I can't imagine it's it's profitable with a brick and mortar store. So you just want to be an online store, and if you're an online store, you're competing against so many other stores. It's it's very tough to make profitable, I imagine. Like, why do, are people going to go to like generic person store over like CFB? That's tough. Oh, there's tons and tons in, in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. We have a really big scene just because the board game community, among other things. Ooh, this is a nice one. So we're going to Wolf Willow Haven here. Where you are, I'm sure there's one store that is a go-to for, say, PPTQs. Oh, we have probably 15 stores that run PPTQs each season. It, like it's it's a lot. We we have one of the more developed magic scenes in in all of the U.S. There are, I'm sure, others. Uh, not to say there aren't, but um, we have quite the scene. All right. So next turn, we get to just Karn get Damping Sphere. We didn't want to do it here because I think from this position it'd be quite hard for them to go off. We don't really need to protect quite yet, but we're going to just establish mana dominance first. Yeah, it's a little bit different out here where, uh, you know, we had SEGs and Grand Prix and all these things pretty regularly. So uh, you always had stores looking to move into it. Uh, I am not. I was finishing off a small sip of whiskey from earlier, but mostly I'm drinking tea. Yeah, Canada, Canada had the face-to-face the -face series, though, and they still do, but it's definitely tough without a, a big scene. Yeah, whiskey's a good time. This grazer... For SCG just watching. Yeah, SCG's a lot of fun. Energies are good. I mean, I wish SCG had coverage still, but alas. We don't quite have uh, enough devotion, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this case, we just sort of lock them out and we'll combo at our leisure. If we had a storm, the festival is when it becomes really easy to combo.
So like turn four, we have what something close to twenty mana. Grab God Pharaoh statue to start. And then next turn we can get Damping Sphere. The other fun thing about this kind of deck when you get this much mana is if they chump block this turn, we just make this a 2020 and threaten to kill them. This is already 13. Plus they're gonna lose an extra one from statue. Like this is turn four, mind you. We had access to what? Something like 25 mana if we had really pushed it. Like we get to just spin our wheels, make a 2020 layer of the Hydra, and then get a second main uh Damping Sphere and just lock them out. You just don't want to get Damping Sphere first if you don't have to. Uh, just because, you know, we're a Nykthos deck. Like, Hidden Strings costs four mana. It's just, it's very difficult to go off from here. I mean, they could have, like, Baseju... Could have Otawara, but again, they're dead if they just have Otawara here. Yeah. So they can cycle Vizier. They can't Hidden Strings. Besage you? Sure. I would. I'm not going to show them the black. Here, they're just dead. We just stand this up and kill them. Their only, their only real shot is to combo before we can. Or like, not even combo, but like combo before we get down the Karn, because we have the Damping Sphere. Uh, from the sideboard, they're mostly just looking to, again, just be consistent combo. This is kind of a, a ships in the night kind of matchup, where both people just kind of look at each other and go, resubmit. Because, like, we're not boarding in these. We board in one Damping Sphere because we want to be able to draw it, but we also want to be able to Karn for it. And that's it. Yeah, we want Storm the Festival. So the way it ends up playing out is you ramp like you saw. Uh, a little spoiler, but this uh, the, uh, the tier list and this written forum came out on my Patreon today, but this definitely jumped quite a bit. Uh, Darksdale is there because it is a land that Karn can get. So you just can uh, make sure if you play Karn and want to hit your land, you can get a land. Also, Darksdale Citadel plus Nissa makes an indestructible 3 3. Uh, Lovestruck is for any aggro deck. So against like Mono Red, we played against that last night, and just a 5 5 is impossibly big. Just absolutely a monstrous house. So, like we were saying, you pretty much just get yourself situated with Nykthos, Kiora, Karn. Cavaliers help you get the Nykthoses, flip over storms, you storm through till you have enough devotion, and then you grab this Pestilence Cauldron and just keep looping. In this kind of matchup, we'll trim one Karyatid since they don't interact with us. Yeah, Eldraine... When Aldrain was legal, it's definitely a situation where it's just like Love Struck Beast ends your ends your day. Keep this hand. This hand's a little bit on the slower side, but we have turn one, turn two, and then Besage is actually quite good against Lotus Field. Uh people don't play around it very well, so they just go to copy their Thespian stage onto their Lotus Field and you can blow it up. That was also a phenomenal draw. These storms are gonna go. If they don't have a uh, grazer here, they're going to be in trouble. But say who? But say you. Would you use your SCG sleeves again? Uh, they're pretty old and beat up at this point. I pretty much exclusively use, uh, not sponsored, by the way, but uh, I pretty much exclusively use dragon shields at this point. Get in there. 
Uh, I pretty much exclusively use Dragon Shields at this point. Um, they just shuffle the best for me. I actually, I've started going back to FNM a little bit. I split the finals, the last two FNMs. I went to one with uh, Nip to Light and one with Mono Red. We had uh, four rounds cut to top eight and four rounds cut to top four FNMs. I quite like the, the SEG sleeves. They're just, they don't make them anymore. And these ones are quite old. I still have both the SEG playmats though. I use those every once in a while, but I still mostly use the, the Kitchen Links uh, if I'm choosing my mat. Still watch the uh, 2015 GP. That's a good one. Big fan. <laughs> There's a lot of good matches on there. Top 8 uh, had quite a few good players, even the rounds leading up. A lot of really good matches. Uh, with Abs and Control being one of the best decks, there's a lot of fair grindy matchups. Ooh. Cycling now. What are we doing with this? Cycle to draw here is interesting, as opposed to Grazer. Oh, do they have Grazer plus copy? That's that's one of the ways they can get around. Well, they can't copy, actually. Yeah, because it comes in tapped. I was going to say, that's one of the ways they can get around this Peseju. But that's OK. Peseju are lair. I don't think you want to just fire off Pesaju in a matchup where we have this many uh, artifacts that are hateful. Makes me think they have another one. Old Growth's good if we had a uh, Nykthos. Play Troll, draw a card off Kiora. Untap this. We could go for this at any time, but we're not in a rush. We have the Storm of the Festival next turn. What was the worst thing a player did cheating-wise? Uh, the worst thing that was caught when I was a judge was we had a couple, like, uh, we didn't have that many big cheating things go on when I was a judge. I caught a player cheating at a Grand Prix as a player. That one I had, but... um. As a judge, for the most part, it was it was more small ball stuff. People didn't didn't really aggressively cheat uh, all that much when I was judging. A couple of times we had to like really heavily spectate matches and things like that, but it wasn't anything too bad. Hey, how's it going, Tyrant? How are you this evening? Yeah, as a as a player though, I caught somebody shuffle manipulating uh, against me at a GP. That was interesting. Yeah, but Seiju on Thespian stage, that happened to me in the mirror uh, at a paper event, and that felt bad. Ooh, well, we're doing it. So play your elves before using Nykthos. Disagreements over certain plays. The thing is, like, most people are really bad at lying, just, like, as a, as a rule of thumb. So, like, what ends up happening more often is that people believe what they're saying and then you just keep asking more questions and they it very quickly becomes a mis an issue where like oh no wait actually i meant this and it's like okay well that's fine but it becomes very easy to to usually suss out mighty penguin 07 says recently ran across your youtube channel looking at lotus field leagues great videos with good explanations of lines relatively new to pioneer and come from a legacy background well welcome hope you're enjoying the format Oh, I did the thing where I didn't float with my Nykthos. What a shame. Uh, appreciate you hanging out. Lotus Field's a, a fun one for sure. I know a lot of people have been enjoying the Lotus Field leagues. Worst thing as a judge, the player is offering dice results. You had to DQ them. Yeah, that's... I I dis I always disliked that that was a thing. I understand it's it's a thing that has to happen on Watsy's end, but... It, it always somewhat bothered me. I prefer to, to educate players as best as I can as opposed to just punishing them, but it's a situation where the gambling rules in, in most situations force their hand a little bit. Okay, so let's 
Untap Mykthos again. As you can see, we're uh, we're going off a little bit here. Looking for some Karns. Karn the Great Creator. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that, if you're like running out of time and you just offer to Karn or dice for it, that's illegal. And that's a, a problem. We don't have a cure in the yard is the only problem with trying to loop here. We kind of need to storm first here. We can storm twice to look for another Kiora, and then we're good. Well, another Nyssa gets us a lot more mana. Yeah, opponent has long since lost this game. Play small paper tournament Saturday with Lotus and got second? Wow, well done. Yeah, Lotus is a tricky one to just sort of like have locked down that quickly, so that's quite impressive. Well done. So I feel like if you come from a legacy background, you might have some uh, reasonable consistency with uh, that style of that style of decks, depending what you play in legacy, I suppose. Yo, Connor, thanks so much for the raid, friend. Hope you had a good stream. All right, now we have a cure in the yard. So we should be good to go. All right, let's do this thing. So, we want to burst for Nykthos, Kiora. Oh, we've played land, so we can't actually play the Nykthos. Hold on. Hold on. We have five, two, and this untaps. Okay. We're good. Deck was called Greenstorm before as a meme, but now it's real. It's true. It's too real. Don't worry, we'll get their opponent. Alright. Sword of Burst, grab Kiora, grab Karn. Look at me, I am the Storm player now. Yeah, so we grab this Kiora, we grab this Karn. I'll play this Kiora. Keep the new one. Untap Nykthos. Uno to 3 0 into 3 2. That's a big Monka, but nice to see the 3 0. Lost the Lotus games 2 and 3. Bad Mulls and th oh, Thing of the Ice Travel is tough for Winota. But what are you going to do? The Winota, the Winota giveth, the Winota taketh away. So because Restorative Burst exiles itself, Karn can go grab it from exile. And, uh, oop. Grab Karn, grab Kiora. And we have looped. See, we had exactly enough mana, and now we're floating eight mana on this loop. So we're going to just keep doing this. Yep, you just Legend Rule out Karn, grab the next one. Uh, in paper, you would play one Heart of Kirin so that you can do this whole loop with only one copy each. Because you can kill your own Planeswalkers, which is a neat thing. But in online, it's a lot of clicks. So uh, when BCS was making this deck, they went without the uh, Heart of Kirin. Or sorry, not making, but uh, playing this version. See, we're up 17 mana now. We just keep netting mana over and over again until we have gained... Yep, you just crew the heart over and over again so you can go off without having the excess. 
It does. This is just infinite mana. If we were in paper... Hold on. We'll get there. Don't... I promise we're not just using our clock for the fun of it. So the front side of Pestilence Cauldron lets you mill your opponent equal to the amount of life you've gained, and Restorative Burst gains four life each time we cast it. So we have gained, currently, uh, we've shocked, so we've gained 12 life. We're going to get it up to the point where we gain 60 life, or in this case, 48, and then just mill them out. So that is the loop, is you just mill out your opponent. We also can uh, cast the Storm in the Festival that's in our graveyard if we want to just like do other fun things. Yeah, you can also just fire up uh, Lair of the Hydra. There's lots of them. Yep, we're just here for a minute. Yep, the Overgrown Tomb lets you cast the... Uh, the, the cauldron and uh, you just use a Kiora to untap your black source to cast it and then you do the same loop and then use the second Kiora to untap your uh, cauldron lets you do it so you can do the uh, mill over two activations so you don't have to, you only have to do half as much life there's a lot of little shortcuts but the combo is actually pretty fast if you see another way to get a black source of them too we have uh two sylvan caryatids that also can tap for black uh so damping sphere is actually tough for this deck just because you are a nykthos deck otherwise you just want to get under it also as a ramp deck there are there are hands that just kind of fizzle out and die so it is definitely not a uh, a guaranteeable deck. Besage you exist, yeah, but you only run one Besage you, and it's sort of the same problem as like Lotus Field, right? Like at some point, decks will adapt to uh, just attack you from the ground up if this deck continues to do well. All right, Kiora. We're at fifty life. We started at eighteen. Do. Yeah, there's one Besage you. Oh, there's nine Besage you. That's true. I only learned that because I had to spell that card a hundred times during preview season. Uh, Leyline of the Void stops it uh, in the same way that very few people would play Leyline of the Void, but it does stop it. That's true. All right, so let's flashback this festival. <laughs> we have our own damage here. Get a new Nykthos. Another Karn. Okay. Extra Karn is freebies. We don't actually have to play the Kioras for mana now. Alothoporus. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Yeah, the other thing is this deck attacks from two such disparate angles that it's a little bit tough. Alright, so we play this. So now that we have a bunch of mana, we can actually do the, the side effect here. So we've gained 40 life. We want to do this one more time so that we have an extra Kiora in the chamber. And now that we have the Kiora in the chamber, we play the Karn. As long as we had uh, enough to do it twice, but this is, this is the faster way to do it, is you make sure you have an extra in the chamber. Yep, there's a God Pharaoh statue. Let's mill. Pair one. Mills 40. We play the Kiora. Keep the new one. Kiora untapped cauldron. So you really only need to do it for like 25 because you can just mill them this way. And then just to make sure nothing funky can happen.
Got for a statue. Yeah. And that's the combo. So we went a little bit over just for the sake of it, plus it's fun to sometimes cap out some big mana, but yeah, that was a, a turn four pretty deterministic kill. Got to mill out their whole deck here. And like I said, in a in a matchup where we're not worried about them killing us on turn four, like look at this board. Even if we couldn't combo, we could just keep storming the festival until we have a a Oh yeah. Yeah, we won game one with the early Karn into Godfara statue. Alright, this hand's a little slower. On the play, I'm a little bit happier about it, though. It's also pretty solid into most decks in the format. Turn 2, Haven. Turn 3, we can put the second Haven on and play Troll, and then we're just really cooking. Could also just draw an Elf at some point in the middle there, but... Oh, we playing a Mirror? Nope. Alright, playing Lotus Field again. This hand is not as good into Lotus Field specifically, just because we don't have... I mean, I guess they could be something else, but they're probably Lotus Field, right? Actually, Basic Forest isn't super common. No, it is. Lotus Field it is. Yeah, we really need to draw a Karn here. But the fact they put the stage in means it might take them an extra turn to get set up. Play land, put this on here, get this out here, and then we have five mana. Play Cavalier and hope to just go off. Budget Beseju. The problem with budget, budget Beseju is you really need Beseju in the format right now. I mean, you, you need Beseju, you need Odawara, you need Blast Zone, but I mean, people got to do what they got to do. Pioneer cards have spiked on, uh, on Magic Online. Hey, how's it going on our house? I hadn't caught you yet today. Just to be able to besage your problems. Yeah, I think most people are at one, but because you can fetch breeding pool, some people will just play the pool instead. Razor, Lotus Field. Well, really need to draw a Karn. They can't clone this yet, because they sort of did their turn sequence in an odd way, but it all works out. Nissa. Alright, well, we're on our game plan. It is a game plan. We just really need to find uh, one Karn the Great Creator, and we're in pretty good shape. This three... Three becomes six, seven. We can do this, becomes quite a lot. I mean, we have a lot of mana, it's just a matter of needing to find the Karn. We had a Seiju too, we could punish this, but. Alpine Moon is actually an odd one because if you play Alpine Moon they early, you have to name Stage because otherwise they get free Lotus Fields and it dies to Odawaro, Seiju, and Blast Zone. Which is a little bit awkward. Oh, we might die here. So they can turn three us here if they uh, have a hidden strings, a pour over the pages, and then an emergent ultimatum. So copy, hidden strings, pour over the pages. We might die on turn three here. Yeah, it's best to play Alpine Moon after or to just play it early on Thespian stage, one of the two. Well, they tapped their mana wrong for hidden strings, so yeah. It looks like it's scrying. Hey, hey, hey. Can't besage you our forest. Another stage, sure. After the second, after the first stage, the stages are a little bit. Ooh. Oh. Don't mind. Hmm. Hold on. I have to do it this way. That's okay, though. I'm all, I'm all about it. And tap this. This. Where are the storm deck now? Eat. Eat on Cav. 
And so we can hit another Nykthos. Haven. No Nykthos, but we do hit a Storm in the yard. Play this, we have four mana floating. Another land is six mana. Technically, we're always the storm deck. That's true. All right. We're going to flashback storm next turn. If we get a next turn. We couldn't find Karn. We didn't hit another Nekthos, so we couldn't flashback the storm. Here we go. Like I said, though, we still cast... 5, 8, 13, 16. We had 21, 23 mana worth of effects that turn. I mean, it's a little bit weaker than we'd like, but against a fair matchup, that'd be okay. Unfortunately, in this matchup, we are pretty liable to die here. Yep. Pitch a Sylvan Scrying makes sense. Anything doing? Agree, Sled Snowman. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you and your Bible thumb. Hidden Strings Ultimatum. All right, well. This is what it looks like to uh, to not find the Karn early. Well, let's see uh, see which version they are real quick. We are deterministically dead against, I think, both versions of Lotus, but we'll see what they give us. Okay, so the Peer version. All right, give them poor omniscience. Can't be. Any of these cards. Yeah, I mean, having to, to play a warped mana base is a real cost. So we give them this because Peer is, is deterministic. This is as close to deterministic as you can get, but they can theoretically miss. Not just waste two mana. Three mana, actually, because it's sapped. Uh, but, like, they could just miss... Like, if they had five, six lands in hand, <laughs> this Omniscience could do nothing. It's unlikely. All right, Leer is also good enough. Cool. All right, bring in our Damping Sphere. Take out Karyatid. Same deal as last time. These are two of the more ships in the Night kind of decks in the format where, like, we're both just trying to, to look each other in the eye and go as fast as possible. Last time we had it, this time they have it, so we just gotta try to try to find Karn a little quicker. If we knew we were against Lotus Field, that hand was a little bit sketch, but in game one you can't really. Carrying Crow, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. It's not even who's on the play, because both of us can kill on like three or four. It's more about who has the right cards. Right, like that hand we just saw was the nut perfect if we had one more land, but we didn't. Like this hand, for instance, is going to get to four mana easily. So even though we could cast the storm at some point, we want to put it back, and we just want to have turn two old growth to apply pressure, turn three Karn, and hopefully we don't die on turn three. Find this deck in Japanese, let's go. That's huge. Huge brain, Sam. Love to see it. I hope you enjoy having to explain what Pestilence Cauldron does at FNM. That is one of the one of the issues with having a deck like this that has an intricate combo and in foreign language for local events, but. Impression of Pioneer Pride actually playing was this much slower format. Well, the thing is, 
it depends, right? I'd say two of the best decks in the format are blue, white, and blue, red control. So it does slow down. The thing, though, is that we're seeing a lot of decks try and take advantage of those decks' setup time. And that's where we're really seeing uh, these kind of decks come into effect. All right, so I'm going to grab one Damping Sphere. And dare them to play uh, a Lotus Field. And then when they don't, I'll see. Everyone doesn't know Pioneer Stable, Cauldron by Heart, Otter House. You're right. They should. They should. But no. No, no. Not a shot. This even wasn't a version of the deck until Canister started playing it realistically. All right. All right. Turn 3 combo deck that's 5-0, but it's super weak to interaction. Yeah, that's the thing, is people have started really trying to lean into the idea of, like, yo, Sled Stoneman, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. People have really tried to lean into the idea of, like, going a little bit faster to get under these control decks that have been so good for a while now. So this definitely reads like a Basaju to me. So we're going to do something a little cheeky. Canister even discovered the combo by accident on stream. Yeah, that was a little wild. For people who play Mono Green, it's my favorite deck. Well, you have come to the right place. I, uh, I have won a Grand Prix playing essentially Mono Green. A very different Mono Green, but Mono Green nonetheless. So let's get Needle. Seiju who endures. Damping Sphere. Misaster. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Oh, then just like, oh. Uh. Well, we're not Nykthosing this game. At least not yet. But the secret is that. Damping Sphere hurts them a lot more than it hurts us, but yeah, it's it's sad. The Seiji who gets wrecked, beautiful. Love it. Get in there. Yeah, we'll just kill him with 4 fours. Underscore NB, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. It's troll time. Yeah, I feel like... It's really nice seeing some of the more inventive minds coming into the Pioneer scene. We've already seen a ton of uh, a ton of really cool decks start to pop up. Yeah, that taps are colorless. You have two colorless lands, friend. This is an Alpine Moon. Costs two mana to hurt you. Yeah, if they if they don't really play a colorless mana, <laughs> all right. They've seen seen how it's gonna go. All right, fire back up. All right. This hand is perfect if this was a forest. Got everything. Man, if only we had, didn't have this incredibly powerful land in our hand. What a shame. Mole again. Hey, this has everything we possibly want. So, turn one elf. We're gonna have to play this Beseju. Probably? Almost assuredly, right? Elf. Yeah, we're gonna have to, to play this Beseju. Then do we wanna get rid of Cav or Haven? Maybe you're rid of Haven. It's close, though. The thing about Cav is that it really accelerates us into this mid-game. And we are going to have an early Karn. If, uh, so land, two, three, four, five. It only gets us to five. We still need to draw land to be able to Karn plus get the, the Damping Sphere down. 
we just want to play to the idea of if we don't draw a land, we're still able to, to Karn on three. Well, sometimes the elves, they come in packs. This would be the most brutal blast zone you've ever seen. Just utter, utter annihilation. Do, do, do. So if we draw a land, we get to uh, Karn Sphere. Pretty nice. Yeah, Squadron Elf. How sick would that be? Sick robot with a sick card. Squadron Elf. Play Lanor Elf, but it has the text, fetch all your other Lanor Elves. Show me the Bile Blight. Don't you put that evil on me, Sam. Don't you do that to me. I'd ask if that was a good draw, but sometimes you don't need to. Sorry, Legion's End, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. Thank you. This, th <laughs> this is the card that just stapled three land royals together? Yeah, perfect. Tron Blast Zone, four prowess creatures when you're on the draw. Uh, gross. Gross, gross, gross. Unless you're a Tron player, then that was great, but <laughs> we're on your team here. I've often played decks that are either 0% or 100% against Tron. No in-betweens. I remember playing a, uh, a PPTQ once, and my friend was playing uh, Tron. And he goes, what are the odds that I win this game? And I look over and his opponent is playing ad nauseum. And I'm pretty sure we both just agreed that he'd have to get hit by a meteor to win that game. Okay, so... 3-6, we can do everything, huh? There's a little everything. So, troll is free. Roll is free. They make six mana. And then we get Karn down. And then they concede the match. We're on the draw. But if this elf dies, we're just doomed. Ooh, it's much better. Much, much better. Yeah, no problem. Hope that helped. It's a, it's a weird combo for sure. Um, yeah, playing against a deck that absolutely would have done it. Yeah, Blast One's the only one that usually comes up. Sorry, I've now just been like going to take the sip of tea for a while now. Ooh. We're against Blue Red. Could be Blue Red Control, could be Blue Red. What happens if you don't have a black source is the deterministic way to get to your Overgrown Tomb? Well, you have four Storm the, Ca four Storm the Festivals and four Cavalier of Thorns. Uh, so you can just sort of rip through your deck to get to it. Um, but that's really the, the only linchpin, is you do need to find it at some point. Uh, I kind of want to take this Karn against them, but I think we need to accelerate, because Old Growth Tro is really good against them. Both versions, Phoenix and uh, Control. Thing in the ice? No. Okay, so it's Phoenix. Kind of happier for it to be Phoenix, to be honest. I think Control has more outs to killing you than Phoenix does. Especially game one. Though we are sad we didn't keep the car into just exile our graveyard. Um, yeah, you're in two carry tids, one over own tomb. So there is a way to like break up the combo that way if they can get rid of your Black Source, but you have this uh, Golos as well to fetch up your Black Source, and it goes into play tapped, and you can Kiora. So that was a newer addition, which I forgot about uh, since you had asked. But yeah, you can, you can Golos to get your Tomb and then untap it with Kiora. So yes, there is a deterministic one. I just forgot. <laughs> as it goes. The joys of new decks. Okay. Three.
Yeah, it is a, it's really nice the way this deck's constructed. Don't need to do that. We can save the untap in case we hit a elf. Step one, have 12 mana, two of each walker. Step two, question mark. Step three, your opponent concedes. Yeah, profit. Easy. There we go. Yeah, Phoenix has a hard time answering a uh, an old girl troll. That should be the command. But we'll strictly to find a land, no way to activate. Yep, yep, no way to activate. I mean, like, in the same sense that Golos exists and Sylvan Carriage exists and Kiora exists, you could loop and generate one off-color mana each cycle after a certain point. Yes, it does. It does a... Uh, we do have the indestructible land, in fact. Here we go. Yep, we have that to be able to search up and then play with Nyssa as well as play with... Uh, to uh, fetch with Karn. Oh, uh, Cascades? It's a little tough to run the, the Cascades. Oh, hello. Yeah, you, you can theoretically activate Golos. It's just not... It's usually just not worth it, truth be told. I think most of the time you'd just be happier to... to be doing what you're doing anyway. I'm going to play Cavalier here. We'll Nissa next turn, and also if we hit a... Oh, we drew the Nykthos. Oh, we hit the Nykthos too. One mana short of getting to do it all, but that's okay. Yeah, there's not a fatty we're trying to hit. We're just trying to, like... Be valued. Uh, treasure Vault to make the black mana instead of Golos? You could. You could. But uh, the secret is Golos also finds Nykthos. So in a non-zero amount of times, you want to be able to go get... Um, go get Nykthos. Like if you play turn three car and minus get Golos, you can play land, go fetch Nykthos, and then usually win the next turn. I don't know why the Streamlabs one does deck list instead of deck, but I, I need to do a command that deck returns deck list. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Sled. It's been happening forever, so it's something I, I keep meaning to do, and then I forget to do it, and then I'm like, man, I should really do that, and then, you know, it's next stream. All right, we'd love a storm in the festival or something big here. Karn or Storm the Festival are our best draws, for sure. I mean, Cavalier is also great, but... You know, sometimes, sometimes you just, just put it to the top. Nothing... Nothing... But skill and ease. Yeah, one of the things that I think people don't do enough in Magic is just like ask for cards to go to the top because like most of the time it's just like a consideration of like what's the best thing I could draw and like it looks really nice when you do it like that but really it's just like I'd like to draw the best card in my deck for this situation but it does look nice when you pull it off well these have been pretty atrocious pretty pretty bad but that's okay yeah, it's useful to be thinking about good draws for sure. MTGO Premium, I think you, I, I think you just renewed. True, true. All right, get in there. Yeah, not seeing a Karn there was brutal because we we easily had the full combo if we found a Karn. But one of the actual nice things about Storm of the Festival is like unlike Collective Company, you can't miss. Right, we got lands and now we're really far ahead on lands and that's actually quite nice for this deck because if we draw another storm we can just go off or we draw a car and we can just go off but not actually having a way to miss is really really important what did they lightning axe the forest okay well block the cavalier 
Well, Nissa ain't getting weaker. Worried about the matchup from the Thingless Phoenix side. Yeah, the one gust is not uh yeah, I mean it basically fixes it, Banjo. You're you're good. Don't add any more cyborg cards, you're fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, this is one of the things that this deck can do. Is just like uh I think I forget who did it, but one of the one of the decks did play a smashing uh just as a way to add an extra uh spell land. It's definitely up there. Andre, yep. Yeah, Andre did it for the mocks. That's what it was. You hit it off pieces is the main idea? Yeah, hitting your lands off pieces is a sweet one. Other pieces? Sure. What they put? Opt and fire impulse, and then consider expressive. I think basic mountain is playable in Phoenix, though. Hardly counts as a land. Well, are they just trying to kill us? They've attacked us twice. They killed a Nissa. Yeah, I mean, keeping Cavalier on tap would be good if we think they're going to combo out here, but I don't quite think we're worried about our life total quite yet. And we do want to put them under pressure because they will win a long enough game if we don't find a Karn. Yeah, flipping double Phoenix here is a problem. That might kill us. Because they can just trespass again and then tag us for nine. That was the worst possible flip for us. We're dead. That's okay. I mean, we had a, a look at, what, 10, 12 cards, what was it? Yeah, we had a look at 10 cards for something to do, and we missed. Sometimes it'd be that way. Yep. And sometimes it'd be like that. Bring in the one damping sphere, same idea. It's not as good against, uh, actually we want to take out a, a dork. Sometimes it do be like that, it's true. That is one of the reasons that Phoenix is still one of the most consistent decks in the format. Sometimes they just win. Yeah, if we'd hit Cavalier, Karn, we had a lot of good draws there. But sometimes it'd be like that. That is, even, even with this style of deck where you can see so much, do so much, uh, there is still the inherent risk of just dying to not seeing the right cards off your big spells. I'm a lot happier to keep non-elf hands against decks that have a lot of early removal. Careful, especially in early turns where you might want to cantrip and trespass, it's okay. That's true. Yeah, they also had to hit double phoenix there plus the trespass but they were getting low on cards so it wasn't unlikely for sure right on time Lenor elf yeah this is another matchup where uh, god pharaoh statue is pretty much a ko be careful about counter spells i'm just gonna play an elf we can afford to take it a little slow because they're almost assuredly going to play things like um, pieces at some point. That's when we can just jam our Karn pretty freely. Yeah, that's fine. We weren't counting on that elf anyway. Yep, like here they play expressive and now we just get to resolve our Karn. It was smart though. By killing our elf, they keep us off storm. Land a elf on the shelf. Beautiful. Good. Do we consider Spell Pierce here? I don't think I respect it, but maybe I'm supposed to. Maybe I'm supposed to. Grab our God Pharaoh statue here. So like in these kind of matchups where they could just like play land, play Arclight Phoenix, I like to just get the best thing for us, even if it isn't something we can play right now. 
Like sometimes here I would just get like um well remember all of your big spells in mono green are pierceable. It's just the weird combo of like you also have a bunch of creatures and stuff. That's one of the, again, that's one of the things that uh makes this version very weird is you kind of have a little bit of everything going on. Yeah, they can't win a fair fight. Okay. We don't need to rush quite yet. Three, four. Is it Charm Kills Elves? We're not in quite the rush to slam statue. We force them to, to do something here, and then we can play Statue, but we also just want to start developing a, a board to threaten. Statue's good, but they probably board in a braid and things like that, so you want to have some amount of presence on board before you just slam it, otherwise it sort of just ends up being... Uh, ends up just sort of being a, a deterrent. Hey, how's it going, Claudio? Like, now we can exile their graveyard, strand them with an, eight, an 11 drop. Claudio's here, everyone here. Best behavior? Or worst behavior? I don't know how Claudio feels. The ranch. And now we have put them in a position where we're actually threatening their life toll and they're stuck behind our spells. Claudio's favorite Delver player. Is that like a, a hotly sought off uh, competition? Six, ten. Copium Delver, blessed. Well, we're hitting them for 11, which isn't bad. I think that's 11, 14. It's one short of lethal, but we're still going to do it. Five. We'll second main phase the uh the lad. Nissa Moto Premium. How have you guys not gotten on Moto Premium yet? It's just so easy. Look at this, we got a Nykthos cooking. Like, come on, get on Moto Premium. Easy. Although to be fair, you missed it, Claudio. We uh we played Storm, Flashback Storm, and hit uh eight lands and two Wolfel Havens in game one. That's that's how we ended up losing. So Moto Premium has to, you know, it, it's got a it has a lead in time. A small one, but it's there. Every once in a while it glitches. Unlike Koki, you never miss. That's true. That is one of the big reasons I like Storm, is lands in this deck are nice. Big fan of lands. It's part of why we were able to cast both half of Storm in the same turn, but... Well, this hand ain't it. This hand's also not it. It's closer to it. 
the blue white matchup's tough. It's it's like close but tough. Um, we're just gonna ditch these elves. We're against we're against the deck that can almost always kill elves. We're just gonna pitch them. There we go. Uh, blue white's tough. You can usually overwhelm their counter spells to a degree, but if you just draw the wrong half of your deck, uh, you tend to get run over. Wait, we both mulled the five? Kind of, kind of cute. I didn't realize we were in one of these matches. Ooh, Moto Premium. Moi. Yeah, black red mid range has always been a, a tough situation for this kind of deck. Happy with runestones against some of the sideboards because of this deck. Yeah, that's definitely a good one to consider. We have our green lad. Three, four, five. All right, next turn we get to get to start popping off. Lightning axe doesn't stop anything, friend. You've only made me stronger. It actually just gives us six mana, right? Three, yeah. Pieces. Yeah, black red is kind of the uh, the deck that just wants your opponent to kind of not not do anything, and then you just crush them. But sometimes your opponent shows up to play, and it's tough. Oh man, Moto Premium, how are you gonna do a man like this? Cavalier. Just thought sees the powerful cards. Uh, I just want to be able to draw a little extra and get our mana base going. We have we have the game locked up for the most part here. The biggest thing, sure, like. We don't have to care about that, but like now we have threats. I'm a big fan of just like p you need to apply pressure in a matchup like this because they'll eventually draw out of it. And like five is a lot. <laughs> Everyone hates Nick, those, huh? That's that's how this works. Neo forum, more pop forum. Yeah, it's it's not a good one. It's a bad one. I'm going to take this Cavalier. Man, it's really nice when you get to play your your anti storm card after casting like six spells, right? Spider Man meme. Oh hey, we did it. Arrows. Hey, Electric Bob. I wonder if Bob's streaming. Bob's a mid range player. No, uh, Mulligan that hand. I like I've. I've loved Sylvan Carriot. It's been great for me, especially with all these uh, aggressive or uh, burnable matchups. Hey, how's it going, Daniel? On the draw, I'm going to keep this hand and, and maybe we die. Playing something spicy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, please don't kill our, our elf. Please, Mr. Bob. No, Mr. Bob, no! Land? Well, land? Hey, Moto Premium kicks in again. Main deck Legion's End. That's cute. Yeah, I don't see Luxury. Could just be Grix's Pile. I'm a fan. 
kill this one. No. 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 How rude, Bob. Can't believe you do this to me. Do me dirty like this. Alright, we didn't get quenched again. Our thirst was quenched. A grander, a green ponder. All right, that's a, we can't be saying that. That's got to be banned somewhere, right? It is uh, accurate, but is this a notion thief? No, okay, just kill our creature. It's fine. Grander, I'm in. What have you done? OP down, horrendous. Oh, Bob. Bob instant knew. Instant knew we were going to go get that pithing needle. Had it on lockdown. The Gear Hulk? Bob, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? The crazy thing is. We're still just one land away from, from Festival. Ponder stream team from Grinder to Grinder. Beautiful. Your Hulk's a fun one. I2 extinction event. Well, all right. Any Nykthoses in chat? Moto premium for Nykthos? Nope. I wouldn't quite say we're at bad matchup yet, right? The storm the festival is gonna gonna go off probably. <laughs> yep, extinction event's fine. Didn't use it after our storm. Yeah, we'll take five. They're worried. Worried about something. Attacking with an artifact should has an activated ability. I don't know about that one. Tyrants of the Carnage variety? Not in this one. That would be a neat one. Put this in tapped. Well, next turn we get to just Karn. Bob really out here wilding. Narset, true. Yeah, we've pretty much stabilized. We have a Gear Hulk of our own for now. Cruise, oh no. The Terra, thank you for the sub over on YouTube. Appreciate you. We have we have ways to deal with that. With this Soren. We have ways. No. Boo. Well, we can still storm. And if they kill this, we can just put Karn back on top of our deck. Yeah, the, why would... Bob. Bob, come on now. I'll put that card right back on top. Grab a little needle. The uh, same sword. The Mirth Lad. Didn't draw the Tome Scour. Damn. That'd be some hot tech. Ah! I 
Okay, okay. That's okay. Pile of blue-black permanents. We kind of just need to get a little bit further ahead of it than we did there. Only eight more words. <laughs> Make mana play stuff. Dora Karn and a bunch of mana. Loop of Cauldron. All right, we'll keep. They did. They just forgot to reveal Lutri last game. Whoever called it, no clap. Have a Nykthos. No quenches this time on the play. Shock Thoughtsies? No. No. Okay. <laughs> it's got hexproof. No fatal push this time. Just optimal from all decisions. Not forgetting. Beautiful. Yeah, we we figured it out. We knew it anyway. But it's always fun to see the the game two companion. Stoneforged. Thank you for the follow. Are you a mystic? Are they trying to get quenchy again. Huckabone, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Which GP did I win? Uh, I won Grand Prix Providence 2015. Yeah, the trophy is over there on my shelf. It's a neat one. Three, four. No quenches this time. Yeah, we're not going to run this Karn into a quenchy boy or a uh, thing. Didn't know that. Fair enough. I expect it's not something that's just general knowledge, but that's me. I did win a Grand Prix. With a mono green devotion splashing red for Atarka. Calfinway, thank for the follow. That was a good, uh, good go blank. This is going to be a terrible extinction event for us. This a second place GP finisher. Oh, all right. We're only having one ofs in their deck. They are finding all the right ones. Yeah, hate to see it. We're getting roasted by a uh, Grixis Lutry. Maybe this is the bad matchup. Maybe we found it. Ultra premium plan? That's true. That's true. Premium plus. Need a look. Nightmare Muse. Premium pro, pro versus pro slim ultra. <laughs> Grixis Lutri is the sauce. That's just the secret. The secret sauce all along. Is this you? Are you the Otter House? They haven't fatal pushed us yet. Makes me a little bit worried, but... Don't think we're doing much this game if we're not getting in there. Hmm. 
I, got, I took German for one semester. You're not going to catch me with correct pronunciation. Ranger house, am I right? Jeez. Claudio with the claws today. Toddler just moves right into the full luxury suite. That's probably a fun one. Claudio mad because bad. Ooh. I'm willing to block. There's a K command. Well, that's rude. No joke. For a lot of one ofs, they got a lot of good one ofs. Hey, how's it going, internet big boy? We have died. GG's to Bob. Oh no, I went to chat. No, I meant to say GG's. Sorry, Bob. GG, Bob. I like your deck. Oh, I'm such not a fan of Esper or Bant. People have been building them up with the new set, but I. I... I've just ended up in that position where I'm just so not a, a fan of the uh, idea of adding extra colors for a little benefit. But maybe, maybe it's worth it. Mono blue spirits. I feel like this has got to be a good matchup, huh? We just play our big dumb idiots before they get a chance to do much. I mean, Storm's our only spell that they interact with. Game one with the Wanderer. Cavalier of Thorns, tough one to beat. So we can even pay for one. Boy, bruv, great. Transform a sideboard for blue white where you cut Parhelion Supplier. Yeah, I mean, it's just cutting that many cards to try and have just like a pocket pick sideboard is tough. Curving Hero of Precinct 1 into Thief of Sanity. So you're just going to ignore all the red decks in the format? All these red decks out here. They could have Geislight Snare. I'm going to run out Karn first. Young Pyromancer to any spell. Bob! Bob, thank you so much for the raid, friend. I was just saying I meant to chat you, but I clicked out too quickly. I liked the deck. That was a sick Grixis Luxury deck. Kicked us right to the curb. But thanks so much, Bob. Uh, Zizan, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you. Yo, yo. How's it going, Bob? Good. Thanks so much for, uh, for the raid. That Grixis Luxury deck was sweet. Gave us our first loss, but yeah, that was a, a neat thing to see. Didn't know you were a streamer, Kek W. <laughs> true, true. Oh, thanks for the follow, Bob. Appreciate you. One of the, the latest night Pioneer streamers, because I, I reject sleep unhealthily, though it may be. Hey, hey, we tricked him. This is still just three. Let's just do this first in case we hit something worth doing. Oh, like a Kiora. Sleep's bad for you. The soothing gameplay. I, see, I love sleep. Sleep just doesn't always agree with me if I want to get stuff done. I just prefer to get things done instead. Mono green's been great. Uh, we four one with it yesterday. Uh, it's been great so far. We four one with it yesterday. Uh, a friend of mine came top four in the challenge with it on Sunday. It's really been great. Uh, beating up on Lotus Field has been an un unexpected uh, boon. We did combo once so far tonight. Which is great, but uh, we haven't had to combo much, which is always nice. 4 1 with Grixis Lutri. Let's get the 4 1 mash Bob here. 4 1's for everybody. Define combo. Well, so you get Nykthos with 12 devotion, Eora and Karn. You make your devotion. You 
keep making mana as best you can. But then what you do is you Karn for Restorative first. Pick up a Karn and a Kiora from the graveyard. Play the Kiora, untap the Nykthos, make some mana. This exiles itself when you cast it. You keep doing that, you make infinite mana. You gain four life every time. And then you mill them for their library on the last one using your black source. So it does actually full on combo. Yeah, we did that uh, in match one tonight. We, we did the full combo thing. Petty theft, how rude. So they can try and kill us, they can try and kill Kiora. Oh, they're gonna try and kill us, okay. Well, they have these things to counter the storm, which is a little unfortunate, but we might just be able to get past it. Cavalier comes in. We want to float our Nykthos mana first in case we hit another Nykthos. So they have to sack both of these to counter. The they just don't. They're just like, we're off it. Okay. I mean, I don't know how they win then, but... Boat. Boop. All right, you're up, opponent. One honk. F6 powers activated. Too true. Isn't every motor blue player just trolling? Hey, hey. It may be true. That's the other deck I have loaded up for tonight. It's mono blue spirits, actually. I don't know if we'll end up switching, though. This deck's a lot of fun. I do like to shake it up though, but we'll see. New green artifact in the new set. Oh, the one that makes treasures when you tap lands? Oh, that's... That'd be big. I don't know what we do with even more mana though. Mana is not the, the restriction we have. We need, we need better card draw. All right, so you can tap one, but then if you tap one, we crew this. Yeah, if they shackle guys, do we just get to crew this boat? Fireball artifact when? No deal. More than that one? Who knows? Oh, I haven't. I need to look. I I had a bunch of people give me their top five cards for New Capenna, and then I never looked. So like, I still have to look and find my top five because I'm a troll and just outsourced the work for a video instead of doing it myself. And so now I have to go and do it. So I haven't even looked at the set very much. One Ballista. Ballista is banned in Pioneer. Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. Excellent name. Well done. Sniped it. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Uh, I don't think we're cyborg. I think we just we just run it back. The classic cardboard. Top five. The five new triumphs. That well. The Triumphs are going to count as one, and they actually haven't been mentioned that much, which I kind of agree with. I think the Triumphs will end up being on the list, but they won't be as high as people would expect. Um, yeah, it's kind of the problem is like, Triumphs are kind of restrictive. The decks you want Triumphs in are kind of few and far between. Aren't in the Precon Commander decks? That would be... That would be... Nice of wizards. We don't do that here. Rix's Triumph will be nice. Triumphs have cycling. They do. They have uh, cycling three. That is the uh, the the thing. Dollar Dollar Bill TV. Thank you for the Prime Gaming. Appreciate you. Promise I'll spend the Jeffrey Bezos's bucks better than he ever could. Thank you so much. Stream is popping off. We love to see it. We're at 615 followers. 
for those of you who are new here, uh, because we hit 500 followers, uh, I owe t a 10 hour stream this weekend. And we also hit another milestone, so I owe another 10 miles. And uh, you buying a dick rocket too? No, no. We've already discussed no, uh, no phallic rockets with the Visos box. Greer World, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. But over this next weekend, Megan goes off to her bachelorette party. I'm going to be doing two 10 hour streams. So best of luck to my sanity. Saladin, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Maid outfit? Uh, I did actually talk to Megan about using a maid outfit as a stip uh, for the stream, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Digitech Wire, thank you for the follow. Remind me to VIP you on the stream as well. Ah, true, true. Next time I catch it, I'll be sure to do that. I'll probably do it over the weekend. He's usually streaming the challenges. I'll pop in there. Go all in for one 24 hour stream? Oh no. My my brain melts at 10 hours. You should there was some old stream I did uh with a 10 hour anime music stream and it was it got wild. You implying you were buying non phallic rockets then? No no. Still not, but yo, Chris from Crew 3. Nice to see you, friend. That is a nice, nice username, gotta tell you. Just did our top five for prof. It's kind of tough. We aren't super impressed with the power level set overall. Nothing wrong with that though. Yeah, I I like a couple underpowered sets mixed in because like neon changed a lot, and I don't think we were quite ready to run it back. Rise Prometheus, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Little Moto Premium kicking in. Do our uh, thing that makes a ton of mana to get through their conditional counter spells. Deck's name definitely has to be Boats and Oaths. That's a good one. I will pay. Yeah, this set is closer to Innistrad level than Neon. There we go. Fink had enough. We had the, uh, the beautiful Nykthos. Uh, we got the 4-1. Electric Bob gave us the defeat. Grixis Luttry beat us up, but otherwise, went really nice. All right, we crack our five chests. Ooh, a beautiful pixel snow cover swamp, really earning our, our dub here. Storm's Edge, some play points. Man, Soul of New Phyrexia, I loved that card. It wasn't good, but I loved it. Unbeatable in draft, but <laughs> so were pretty much all of those. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed this content on either Twitch or YouTube. If you did, please like or subscribe. If you didn't, be sure to leave a comment down below. I promise not to read it. Until next time.